Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to take a look at a native extension today. I know that sounds a little oxymoronic, like jumbo shrimp, but it is an extension, but it is an extension that is installed automatically when you install SketchUp. This of course is Sandbox Tools, probably guessed from the image back there, but Sandbox Tools is a great way to create landscape or smooth rolling patterns and well, we'll just take a look at how it works right now. All right, so Sandbox Tools is run through this toolbar of seven tools. Uh, we're gonna take a look at half of them today. I know half of seven, but we're gonna take a look at about half of them today, and then the rest of them we'll look at in the next video. So the first one to look at is this one up top called From Contours. What From Contours lets you do is take lines, so maybe this is imported from a topographical study or another CAD file, or maybe I just drew a bunch of lines in SketchUp. Whatever the case is, I can select these lines, click From Contours, and what it will do is just skin that whole thing. Now, a couple things to point out here. One is that this was a rectangular set of geometry I originally pulled in, but you can see how the corners kind of got knocked off. So that's something we can look at how to fix. The other thing to note is the way that From Contours works, if I have a section like this, a rounded section or just a flat area, it's gonna stitch that together flat. So you see I have these, I'm not gonna have like little peaks unless I have geometry there to pull those, that geometry up. Otherwise, it's just gonna end flat. So right here, I don't have a, like a transition, it's just gonna drop to flat, fill it in, and then continue on down. If I look at the hidden geometry, if I come to view and say show hidden geometry, I can see exactly what it is that From Contours does. It takes these contour lines and from the points that make up the curves, it stitches it together. So I don't have an ordered mesh, not, not like I can create, I'm gonna create in just a few minutes, but this is a stitched mesh that is going to create a geometry between the contours. All right, uh, when you do use Create Contours, what it does is it creates that geometry in a group. So I can, I'm just gonna right now grab it and move it off to the side because we're gonna make some changes and run that again. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Hidden Geometry. So there's my mesh I created the first time. So the big thing I wanna take a look at is that geometry. See how it's all chopped off on the corners? What this does, what From Contours does, it comes in and it basically just connects all your edges together and starts filling in. So if I wanna maintain like a rectangular shape, I can grab a line right here, hit Shift, pull that straight across, and now when From Contours stitches that together, it's actually gonna pull out to this corner point. Same thing over here, maybe I'll draw a line like this, just all the way out to that edge. I'll do that at all the four edges, four corners, like that, and then maybe one more right here. So all I did was add those four line segments, and if I grab that geometry now from contours, look at the difference between those two shapes. So just a little bit of extra data there gets me a better looking mesh when I'm finished. All right, so that's great, but what if I wanna create geometry from scratch on my own? Well. I guess we would use a button called From Scratch. So what From Scratch is gonna do is it's first gonna prompt you for a grid spacing. So depending on how fine you want that grid to be, you're gonna type that in there. So if I'm gonna go real big, I might put like 10 foot in there. And that's gonna give me a nice big pieces like that. Uh, I'm gonna go a little smaller. I'm gonna stick with one foot for mine. So I'm gonna say 12 and hit enter. That's gonna give me a one foot grid space. And now you input a grid with three clicks. First click, sets the lower left corner of the grid. And now I'm gonna move my mouse in one direction. I'm gonna go up the green axis for this, and I'm gonna click, and then I'm gonna move on the opposite axis. Uh, it's always gonna pull your second line perpendicular to the first line. Everything I create is a rectangular shape with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click. So something to note, look in the lower right corner here, see my dimension? So my dimension is snapping at whatever SketchUp sees as the next snappable location, but the grid itself is only being drawn at one foot increment. So I'll never get an odd uh, increment. I'll never have a weird rectangle on the end. It'll always be a full square. Once I click, I get a new group. This is grouped together, and it is a grid of lines. Pretty simple. If I double click in here and look at this, okay, so one thing is they're all facing down. So that is something that that from contours does, it always faces down. If it's a concern to you, if you want that, the front face coming up, I can triple click at any point, right click and say reverse faces. 
which for some reason I can't find. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Reverse spaces. Whew. All right. So the other thing you may have noticed when I selected it, if I come in here to view and say show hidden geometry, I have this line between each one. It actually created what we call quads, which is four sided geometry that's broken with a soften and smooth line. Not that that's a, anything you have to worry about at this point, but just know what you're getting, that kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So that's great. I got that grid. What happens now? Well, now we're going to look at the command called smooth. Not move, not smooth, but somewhere in between is where we keep the command called smooth. Now, the first thing you'll probably do is you'll hit smooth. You'll come over here and you'll try to do some moving. You'll find out you can't do anything. You do have to enter the group that the grid is in. So double click to enter the group and then hit smooth to work on it. All right, so here's how smooth works. You're gonna get a control here on your cursor and it's gonna be as big as the radius down here in the lower right corner. Six inches is pretty small. It's smaller than, than one of my one foot grid pieces here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up. I'm gonna say I want it to be like 20 feet. And I get this big, huge circle. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna go right to this corner and I'm gonna click. As soon, I'm holding down the button right now and you see I have different sized boxes or squares on the points. The point that's closest to the cursor where I clicked is the biggest square and they kind of fall off towards the edge and they get smaller and smaller. That is my radius of influence. So as I pull up right in the middle, those middle points are going to follow the mouse exactly and these other ones slowly, slowly follow less and less. So this is basically how smooth works. I can change that, let's drop to half, let's say 10 foot. I can change to a smaller shape and do the same thing. So this is basic smoothing. I do have the option if I want to come in here and grab some geometry. I'm gonna grab a odd set of geometry and I can select it first and then hit smooth. What that's gonna do is all these pieces that are selected are gonna be treated as if I was clicking right on them. So they're gonna move absolutely with my cursor. From there, from each of those pieces, it's going to fall off whatever my selection uh, measurement is. So if I click smooth right now, this is all falling off 10 foot. That's kind of far. Let's bring it back again. Let's say four foot. And now you can see, okay, so all those highlighted pieces have the big squares on it and then it falls off four feet. So I'm going to take that, move it straight up and you can see this is what a pre-selection does in smooth. Okay, so that's great. Um, I can kind of see how that works. If I want to, I can come in with smooth and I can get even smaller. So I might go to two foot and I can kind of maybe do some, some smaller smoothing, but I'm definitely dealing with broad brush strokes right here. Um, I can't, unless I wanted to go in and make a super tiny grid, like three inches, I'm not going to get real detail. And this is where the add detail button comes in. So if I come in here and select some geometry, I'm going to grab this geometry, like say that. I want those pieces on the edge. There we go. Just grab a chunk of geometry and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit the add detail button. What that's going to do is take each of those quads and break them into even smaller quads. What this means is I can come back with the smooth tool, drop to a smaller, let's say, well, we'll go all the way down to a foot and then I can move smaller geometry around to add detail to that big grid that I already have going. So sometimes people come in here and the impulse is to make a super fine grid, right? Go in there and say, oh, I want a one inch grid and drag that out for a hundred feet. You're going to create so much geometry doing that. It's going to be very difficult to manage. What you want to do is start with your bigger grid. I started with a foot for this example, but you could actually go, even bigger, say maybe 10 foot, 12 feet, or even 100 feet, depending on how big of a space you're making. And then only where necessary, come in and add detail. If I want to, I can even take this detail and make it smaller. So I can select a chunk like that, hit add detail again, and now it's even tinier. Now if I come with my smooth tool, I can drop down to maybe six inches. And I can put in even smaller details like this. Once I've got all that geometry exactly how I want it, now I can come in and I can triple click this geometry and I can of course hit soften and smooth edges. And that's going to allow me to go in and specify exactly how much smoothing I want to do. 
and then I can get that same look and feel that I had in my uh, From Contours grid over there. So hopefully that helped you. I mean, a lot of people poked around with sandbox tools, but like I remember when I first got in there, I didn't really know what it did and I didn't use half the buttons. I basically drew a grid that was too dense and then tried to use smooth to make something. It's all about creating exactly what you need, so don't create a grid that's too fine if you don't need it, and then use add detail to get smaller and smaller details and keep using that smooth tool. Did you like that? Did you learn something? If so, click like down below, and if you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button. We make a couple videos and do a few live streams every week around here, and you'll be notified if you subscribe in YouTube. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment. We make most of our video content right now based on comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we'd like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.